Uh, so this is continue uh, version of uh, discussing on Bodhisattva's way of life, which is uh, uh, composed by uh, Shantideva, who is one of the great uh, Bodhisattva uh, scholar uh, <coughs> Mahasiddha from India uh, around the 8th century he composed this uh, 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 Bodhita Bodhisattva Chaya Avatara so the translation we uh, call it the Bodhisattva's way of life because this teaching explained uh, all about bodhicitta and how we should become bodhicitta uh, through that how we achieve enlightenment so it explained uh, <coughs> what is the bodhicitta and what is the ground of bodhicitta what are the methods to achieve uh, bodhicitta and what are the results of the practice uh, on Bodhicitta. As I mentioned last time, uh, this teaching have uh, uh, 10 uh, chapters. The first, not, the first three are uh, uh, how to achieve Bodhicitta and then the second three chapters are how to uh, maintain the Bodhicitta that you achieve and then the last uh, next three chapters are how to develop the Bodhicitta. And the last one is the dedication. So including the dedication, there are 10, ten chapters. So last week we started and we a little bit covered about the, the title. And usually the title is a very, very important in Buddhist uh, teachings. A lot of times uh, people understand the, what is the subject, what is all about the teaching and based on, I mean, the by looking at the chapter. It says, the great master says that uh, if you're a good composer, if you're a good writer, then you will have a, a title that explains the whole subject of the teaching. So in this title, as we discussed last week, uh, <coughs> Bodhisattva's uh, way of life, uh, so that shows that everything from the beginning till end of the 10th chapter is all about Bodhicitta and how to achieve, how to practice uh, Bodhicitta. So last week we uh, uh <coughs> discussed on the first chapter which is actually uh, mm, the benefit of the Bodhicitta. Uh, Benefit of Bodhisattva is always important because uh, whatever uh, work that you wanted to do, uh, you need to know what is the result that you're going to get at the end. And if you don't know, then you don't have, you won't have a confidence to start that project or that study, that work. So we somehow we have to know if we finish this. Uh, study or this work, what will we get at the end? So this explains the bodhicitta. So bodhicitta is actually what we are going to get after we practice, after we learn this. So uh, that's why it's, it is important. So there are a few ways of explaining the benefit of the bodhicitta. Some are already um, <coughs> Uh, covered last week and I think uh, today we are around uh, do you see the number do you have a number on these uh, stanzas yes. if you look at number 21 does it uh, start with um, if boundless merit come to anyone who no, no? may rains of flowers 21. Yeah. This is last week. Do you have the last week uh, text? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Because there are some remaining that uh, yeah. we, we want Sorry. to go, go through. So if you look in, in 21, I mean, 
you know, uh, there is, we mentioned last time, uh, two bodhicitta practices, uh, inspiration bodhicitta and development uh, bodhicitta practices. So now, uh, here, uh, and, and the benefit of the bodhi practice on bodhicitta, uh, the Shantideva explained in the two different steps. The first one is uh, uh, based on uh, Buddha's teaching, you know. Buddha has taught 84,000 teachings, but in many, many of his sutras explained how important, how beneficial the practice on bodhicitta is. So that's one thing that he used, you know, he need to, um, uh, what do you call it, um, a, a ten, he need to explain that the teaching of the Bodhicitta is not just, as he mentioned in the beginning, not that he created. When you, if you see, in, in, uh, look at this beginning of this teaching, he says, in this teaching, this is not something that never has written or never taught that I created completely new. So what he mean was, was that this is already Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and Arhats, I mean uh, Bodhisattvas and scholars in the past already explained, already taught. But I am just trying to consist and make it easier to understand it for uh, those who have a similar level of myself and also to re reminder for myself so which means that already taught so he used many different um, quotes from buddha's teachings sutras so that's uh the first way of uh what do you call what, what is the word uh the authentic uh, authentic lies no authenticating. authenticating the teaching is a genuine and pure and uh, a real so the next next one is he explained with using the logics, you know, the reasons. Uh, what he says here is Simji Nanjalene Sasala Nyam the Sana Pendo Sambadene Sunam Pami Danger Nas. So he said usually if somebody have a good thought or good intention of recovering somebody or friends or families uh, uh, temporary pain or some sickness you know if we have uh, somebody in the hospital little sick and we pray uh, we wish for them to, to recover soon so those people we consider as a good heart and good people good human being right because you you concern you have uh, uh, wishes and you have thought for other people so then he said, but still in that thinking, it's very limited because your wish is just that person, you know, recovered from temporary illness, sickness, like a headache or whatever, you know. But the intention here, the bodhicitta here, is not only wishing for somebody to free from temporary pain, and unhappy, unpleasure, and problems. But in here it says, Simji Riri Madeva Padam Neva Samdeji, Riri Yuntem Pami the Dubon Deva Mijigu. So the Bodhisattvas, I mean Bodhicitta, intention is all sentient beings, no limit, including your family, friends, of course, and then those who have, you have nothing to do with. And also those who you don't like, those who treat you so badly, still include in your aspiration, in your bodhicitta. And you, your wish is not only to free them from temporary pain and unhappy, but to achieve enlightenment. So therefore, you don't need to mention that the bodhi, bodhicitta, the body mind how important it is and how beautiful it is. So 
so the the bodhisattva mind or or intention bodhisattva's intention so in our life the most people who love us most people who care us not only for human beings but even animals you know when we look at the the who is the most scary uh, animal like a animals like a lion and tigers you know they always they always want to eat and kill sentient beings but when it comes to their own kids their own children they have a compassion forget about human being so human being you know love their parents or mother love your kid so much they're ready to do anything for children your kids but still it does not have a in the sense of achieve ultimate liberation achieve bodhicitta buddha so this bodhi bodhicitta is all sentient beings again you have this intention you have this prayer well wish for those who are in suffering of samsara not only achieve this temporary happiness and also not only achieve the better lives like next life human life god life are compared to this the lower realms much much happier but bodhisattva's intention is even way beyond bigger countless sentient beings may they achieve enlightenment completely may they remove their every false mistaken unhappy not only the the ha- unhappy and pain but cause of ha- uh, uh, suffering and, and the pains so he says so you need you don't need to mention about how precious how profound it is the parents doesn't have that even uh, Hla, the, the God you know the God uh in in god in god realm and even those our hearts who achieve very high level of practice still they don't have that bodhicitta the bodhicitta is you achieve only when you become bodhisattvas you know when you generate this bodhicitta mind aspiration bodhicitta or or actualize or or development bodhicitta uh, So the most of the, the, the beings, no matter how good human being you are, if you don't practice, if you don't have learned practice on Bodhisattva's uh, teachings, we do wish for other sentient beings all kind of good things. For other people, people who are around you, for your community, your country and everybody. But achieving Bodhicitta, Bodhisattva, and achieving enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings that never even had a dream in their dream. And he says in the 2025th, when you read this translation in English, is it easy to understand? Does anyone have a copy of last week's? Okay. Yes. And then it says, you no need to talk about other people. You care about yourself so much and you do everything make you happy. And you do, you're ready to do anything that avoid pain and suffering. But we never thought about achieving happiness. I mean, uh, liberation, bodhis- bodhisattva and enlightenment. So that's why the practice on bodhisattva is extraordinarily profound and beneficial has a limitless num- uh, res- result so this bodhicitta is basically the cause to remove all sentient beings suffering and pain 
and 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 uh, so therefore this is uncomparable in this whole universe the whatever wealth everything put in one side if you put the little piece of a bodhicitta on the other side still it's un uncomparable that's what he said here so it's uh, almost like a same meaning. It's uh, it's like uh, uh, you know repeating some of them. Uh, the words are differently laid, but the, the meaning are same. So so from the twenty one to here, it's actually explaining the benefit of aspiration bodhicitta with the logic reasons, you know, with the examples. So next one from the 27th, it's a starting to explaining the benefit of uh, the development bodhicitta. So here it says, so until now we have been talking about intention, you know, wishing for others, benefit free them from suffering achieve happiness if mere thinking having a good intention have that much benefit that makes us so special then what about actually practice on generosity discipline uh, diligent concentration wisdom to achieve for, for, for the benefit of all sentient beings to achieve enlightenment so now it's saying that you already talk about the benefit of the intentions, but now it's a actually practice. So you don't need to talk about how important, how precious is it is, actual practice, because even thinking about the enlightenment and the bodhicitta are so special. That's you already mentioned. However, so in this universe, there's nobody who doesn't want to have a suffering. Nobody wants to have a suffering. And there's nobody who doesn't want to have happiness not only human beings and also animal whatever life you know as long as you have a feeling you have a life what you want is happiness and what you don't want have a suffering yet why don't they have a happiness that they want and why don't they always I mean why do they always have a su suffering? That they don't want and then it says although we have an intention to get wishing to get out of suffering and achieve happiness but we always in um, what do you call have suffering and not have happiness out of ignorance and we don't know what is the right method to cultivate our happiness and cause of happiness and what is the right uh, antidote for our suffering and the cause of suffering. Therefore, even though no matter how much we don't like suffering, we don't want to have, and no matter how much happiness we want and we are trying hard to get it, but lack of our uh, wisdom, not knowing what is the right cause, for happiness and cause uh, uh, not knowing what is the uh, cause for suffering that we need to avoid. So basically what we are doing is we are treating our happiness like an enemy, it says. And we are treating our um, uh, cause of suffering, we are treating our best friend, we are treating our uh, happiness, cause of happiness, we are treating our enemies and, and destroying all the time. Can you dare a pumbata? Don't have man that the devil printed. Don't have that teachers. So here, 
and practice in bodhis bodhisattva bodhicitta uh, it's involve uh, compassion loving kindness and wisdom in this 29th stanza it says um, the bodhisattvas the practice is uh, Wishing for those who are lack of happiness, wishing for those who are lack of happiness to have happiness, and wishing for those working for those who are working to remove the cause of suffering for those who have lots of suffering. Deve Pumbata. Deve Pumbatang means those who are lack of happiness and for those we have a loving kindness working for them to increase their happiness that is a loving kindness and those who have suffering working for them to remove their suffering is the compassion and then those who are lack of wisdom to know what is the cause of suffering and what is the cause of uh, happiness that we need to cultivate and practice is the wisdom. So here, uh, the practice on these three, compassion, loving kindness, and, and wisdom. So next one is 30th. No, actually, this 29 and 30s are together. So now the Bodhisattvas who does the practice on compassion, loving kindness, wisdom, how much is their merit? How much merit that they're generating is uncomparable. It's no, no, no limit. So now these uh, three, four uh, stanzas explained uh, the benefit, I mean the, the, the qualification or the qualities of the bodhicitta, intention bodhicitta and uh, generation bodhicitta, these two, the qualities. Of the bodhicitta, but next one it says uh, uh, the quality of those who practice the bodhicitta means it goes to a person who practice, right? The bodhicitta is uh, the practice that they practice, intention bodhicitta, uh, aspiration bodhicitta, and development bodhicitta are the practices. But now the next one is. Uh, those who practice this bodhicitta, the qualities of those who practice bodhicitta. Penda lendo kang in ba tiang re sing ma yu na ma ju le bo re ba ye. Jan ju sen ba mi ji ku. It says usually when people do something good to you, when you had a hard time. And then when you are better now, you have them back, like pay back, you know, what you owe. So when people do this, usually people think it's good people, you know. We consider it as a good people because that person is nice, you know. Now he, underst he or she understands and realizes how, you know, how helpful the other person was when he or she is going difficult and so on. But here the bodhisattvas, the practice in bodhicitta, they have aspiration practice and development bodhicitta. They have done nothing to bodhicitta. The bodhi bodhisattvas need to pay back, you know. And also the bodhisattvas have a no sort of hope that they will something return. If they help them and you know usually you you know it's uh if you help somebody and then somehow you have some kind of expectation that you will get something returned you know 
So bodhisattvas have no their kind of expectations. The completely pure motivation, based on completely pure, genuine, loving, compassionate intention that does not expect anything for return. But of course, in the long term, you're expecting you to achieve enlightenment. That's the biggest expectation. But usually here in, in, in regular practices, uh, we have, people have a two kind of expectations. Uh, the beginners, you know, when we do something good, good behave, or do some generous, or, you know, help other people, and we'll get something back later, you know. Some people will help us back. Those, the one category thinks, have an expectation for this life. And then, like the Theravada practitioners usually, um, result of their practice, benefiting others, they hope to reborn in a better life, you know, reborn in a human life. Uh, a human life that has, you know, no problem with uh, food, cloth, shelter, or even the rich or, or, or big family, you know, those kind of hopes. But in the Bodhisattva practice, you don't expect anything. It's a completely, you know, what do, what do you call it? Pure, genuine, you know. So those who practice on that Bodhisattva, it says no need to talk about how Great for us means how how wonderful they are. Draw a news and not message or a kitchen, say some jimber seva la niji niji, tamper seva yam, give a chiba in Hijoko. It says in our culture, if there is somebody who helps poor people, let's say you go to a um, uh, food bank, you know, every week give um, 10 kilo of a rice to them and then you tell other people you know i'm doing this or you go to uh, somewhere uh, where there is refugee came or something and you go there every day give lunch or or meal you know or, or dinner So those people, I mean, it's, it's an example, right? So those people, we say, oh, he's great, great man. He goes, give a donation to there and here, and he helps. But when you look carefully, I mean, the, when you compare to this one, so your intention, it's also very limited, that your intention is just to, you know, solve the problem of hunger or whatever, the problem situation there. And then your duration is also once in a while. You're not doing that like every day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know. And then sometimes even these people give those with very, uh, you know, what do you call it, in a disrespect way. Eat it, you know. Sometimes when beggar comes, you know, when beggar knock your window uh, when you're driving, <coughs> you know, you throw your dollar there. You gave something, but still your action, your intention, it's not not pure. And then at the same time, you want to, you want to advertise, you know. Whenever you go there or to give some donation or whatever, you want to take a picture and you want to post on a Facebook, a Instagram, then ask around other people, have you seen my post? And, and they, if they say, no, I have to do it again, you know? So usually a lot of uh, people have that kind of intention, you know, even if they do a good actions. So still we consider these people have a good people. You know, 
of course they are great they are doing lots of services for you know people who need but when you compare to the practice and what it says simjin dang simjin dang tai ye la du ring du de war shi de war la na mi ye la samba ta da zo zi ba ta de jin ba ta shi jin jin me ku so it says the bodhisattvas their practice i mean they are giving this compassion loving kindness to who every sentient beings and all the time 24 hours the time is not limit and their action is not limit because it's a 24 hour you know never stops and then intention it's also not limits because it's to achieve enlightenment so therefore you don't need to mention how precious it is kangit tende jase jindala karte ne sin ki bar se bhai kangit tende jase jindala karte ne sin ki bar se bhai ne sin ki bar tang ji ka bhai nya ne bol jo so dus and also in we have a sponsors you know like the temples have a sponsors communities have a sponsors everything have a sponsor and also we think it's a great it is great but it says the bodhisattvas are actually the biggest sponsors they sponsor the whole cause of all sentient beings happiness and achieve enlightenment so they would be the biggest the world biggest sponsors so then it says if we treat those bodhisattvas badly it, it you know the consequence negative karma that we have to be born in uh hell realms so that's why and also when you treat the bodhisattvas uh, nicely and also it uh, the, the merit that you achieve multiplies so when you see bodhisattvas but the hard to see bodhisattva you know the bodhisattvas usually come in many different forms so you don't know which one is bodhisattva so which one is not a bodhisattva so therefore as a practitioner it's important always to treat other people always you know fairly respectfully it's i think it's important because we never know where is the bodhisattva even though it's an unintention that we don't know that is a bodhisattva but still you know we could create it to make this negative karma to be born in in, in lower realms the standard 35 on the kanshi irap tanzina tendewa papa it also says like when you treat and respect bodhisattvas even by seeing or uh, or uh, viewing looking at them nicely generate tremendous positive karma so therefore it's shivala shanti deva in tibetan his name is shivala shiva means the uh, i mean i'm talking about the author shiva means peace la Plan means God, I guess. Peace God, yeah. That's his name. So he says, as a conclusion, whoever practice, whoever generate the bodhicitta, intent aspiration bodhicitta and development bodhicitta, I bow down. I do prostration to them. So that's the the first chapter, I think. uh finished so the next one is the second chapter uh <clears throat> so the 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 title of the chapter second chapter is actually confession uh but uh within this chapter there are not only confession there are uh many parts uh and mainly this chapter is on uh, a seven branch offering uh so the next chapter would be coming 
receiving bodhis bodhisattva vows and how to receive vows, you know, what are the procedures and so on. So the reason why we have a seven branch offering is a seven branch offering is a, is a, the Buddha mentioned that this is the best method to removing our purifying ourselves, removing our negative karma. So in order to receive precious uh, bodhisattva vow, which is extraordinarily, extraordinarily uh, high, profound, beneficial. So uh, we, before that, we have to make ourselves some sort of preparation, you know, to ready. Try to reduce our negative karmas. But uh, we cannot completely reduce negative karmas. If that the case, then we uh, we all would be bodhisattvas and, and, and the Buddhas, you know, so we wouldn't be here. But, uh, you know, he taught these seven branch offerings before taking the bodhisattva vow. So, seven branch offering, you know, we usually do in every pujas, we have that seven branch offering, prostration, uh, making offerings and the confession uh, and rejoicing, you know, uh, those different uh, steps. But this will, uh, this seven branch actually comes in a little different order than uh, than the usual one. So this one actually begins with the offerings. So this, I don't know if uh, if you really need the explanation of those offerings because they are seems very straightforward. So are you looking at the second cha uh, chapter? Second chapter. If you look at the page number um, one, uh, uh, chapter one to the Buddhas, to the gone, then to the sacred Dharma, spotless and supremely rare, and to the Buddhas offerings. Portion of good qualities that I might gain this precious attitude. So this is begin with the offerings. Basically, the first sentence is uh, in order to receive, in order to receive bodhisattva vow or practice on bodhisattva and I am going to uh, prostate two buddhas and bodhisattvas and dharmas in usually three jewels mainly it, it's like three jewels the buddhas and then teaching that buddha taught is the dharma and then those who practice the dharma are the sangha Bodhi, in, in this case the the sangha is bodhisattvas the Yin Nam Dang is the Buddha, and then Dambichu is the Dharma. Uh, Sanjie Se is the Sangha. So those Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, those who have uh, limitless qualities, so I prostrate to them. So the sec second one is uh, actual offering. So offering have uh, three different levels. Uh, the offering, the things that has owned by somebody and then things that belongs to somebody the things that are not belongs to somebody is two steps and then there's imagination offering so here so now who in the first stanza it says who you going to make the offerings buddha dharma all the buddhas buddhas in the past Buddhas in the future, Buddhas in the present, and all the teachings that Lord Buddha taught, 84,000 teachings, and also uh, any other teachings, you know, all the teachings that are the genuine teaching that, it, that helps us to achieve enlightenment, that included in the Dharma, and then in the Sangha, all the Bodhisattvas, you know, Whoever practices bodhicitta, inspiration bodhicitta, and development bodhicitta. So now you're making offering to all those. 
what are you making offering flowers and you know, all kind of flowers and medicine whatever good thing that exists here on this planet basically making offerings all the precious whatever precious there all including the clean water the precious mountains uh, precious forests precious um, uh, retreats you know isolated uh, uh, nice uh, gardens different trees uh, trees with all kind of uh, fruits you know so these are actually very straightforward we don't need to talk about too much and basically if there's anything that is missing and you can always add it in you know that's what you think I have to do with balsam shin incense precious incense precious trees and precious roto um, roto is what all kind of fruit fruit that come uh, fruit that grows on the trees uh, fruit that grows on our farm is this, this fruit go, grow on a farm anything that grows on a farm anything that grows on a tree anything grows on any type of plant and you collected them and making offering to the buddhas and bodhisattvas so then Zimwa and uh Beme Jimbata Namba Shivikini. Then you're also uh making offering of beautiful uh oceans, beautiful lakes, beautiful ponds that has uh, surrounded by wonderful tree, different multi colors of trees with beautiful smells and nice birds and birds singing and all kind of you know the the whatever you can imagine. So I think so those like the offerings that you are making have no limit, no size. It's just the whole universe. Uh, we don't imagine something small. And then chapter six, Loyla the Tobajin So basically here and also we are not physically going into forests or going into the the farm to to pick up those things so we are imagining right so whatever there you imagine all the wonderful things the trees and palms flowers lakes birds deers and elephants you know all animals and limitless and then you're making offering to three jewels, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And in this stanza 7, it says, I am doing these offerings because I am not rich enough to make an actual offering, you know. I'm not so rich so that I can make all those precious limitless precious offerings to buddhas and bodhisattvas but i'm imagining i'm making offering of all the existence you know the precious substance to buddhas and bodhisattvas please accept my offerings for the benefit of all sentient beings including myself So the next one is uh, offering, uh, the eighth stanza is uh, body offering, means offering yourself. Means Buddhas and to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, now I'm making offering of myself, my life, my body. Please accept and use whatever way 
you would think that is beneficial to other sentient beings to removing their negative karma, increasing their happiness and causes of happiness. Could be cheating bounce. And take me as your servant, you know, it says could be cheating bounce charity. Dani Chi Yong Zoena say na simji pembaraji mungi de lay and as a result please liberate me from fears of suffering and also causes of suffering and make me that I don't know I I no need to fear in this pain of suffering in samsara anymore and also which removes all the negative karma that I have created in my previous lifetimes and also help me to not involve into any negative karmas in the future which means not killing, not sexual misconduct, not lying, not uh, um, uh, you know uh, all the negative karma. We have like 10 negative uh, virtues that you know negative that create uh, the, uh, the, the sufferings so the next one is chapter 10 it's now imagination offering so this imagination offering uh, begin with the uh, with um, two uh, <laughs> clean wash Ah, uh, like yes, yeah. <laughs> so now, again, you invite Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. But before you invite, you create a beautiful palace, you know, like a mandala. You know, you have seen a beautiful mandala, some mandalas, uh, you know, huge mandala, beautiful one, palace, nice, colorful, made of a wish fulfilling you know, all the precious stones, jewels you created and then you invite all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and after you invite the Trichy Compassion Association Rejim Barokawai on the Mati which are Lare Tripater the Yinshi Banam the Tese Rejim Bambamu Puju Yonu Bakabara Roma Jagata Bukutu so now after you invite the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas now you give path you know, with a precious water and clean precious with a beautiful smell you know and uh, give nice bath and with the beautiful music you create you know the best best music that you think of you know again i wanted to say one thing here is it's not that buddhas and bodhisattvas need offerings they need our prostration they need our offering they need our uh, you know a bath not like that they don't expect anything to offer for them they are beyond that they already achieve enlightenment they have no hopes no fears they are they achieve ultimate liberation but in but reason why we are doing is uh, we, the people who practice, the followers, we are not in light. We still have a hopes. We still have a, so much fear. And we have all those negative karmas. In order to remove our negative karmas, so we do the best service for the enlightened beings. In order our negative karma remove our obscurations, you know. So that's why it's important. When you make an offering, you should make of the best offering. And if you cannot make it best offering, then you know the masters a lot of times suggest that you shouldn't try if you can't make good. You know, so sometimes people do like if you have a um, sit some uh, let's say a fruit, <coughs> a very good one, clean one, and you eat, and then little rotten one, and go take to the shrine room and make an offering. You decide to should go to garbage or shrine room, you know. <laughs> so that kind of uh, offering is no good. It, it, for water, food, clothes, whatever, you know. 
So, because sometimes people think, you know what, the statue doesn't talk, uh, the statue doesn't feel, you know, this, this still looks good, the inside may be a little smelly, but they don't smell, you know, the statue doesn't smell. So why don't I just take it to Shriram and live there for a few days before it go to garbage? If I see, if I eat it, I'll get sick, you know, so then it'll be big trouble. So that's very wrong uh, offering, you know, making, making wrong offerings. <coughs> so the, we, what we need to understand is uh, we should make offering something that we like it, you know. If you don't like it, and then you, should, you shouldn't think it's Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, you should offer them, no. You offer whatever you like, because for them, is they don't expect anything. They don't, I mean, they don't care, you know. It's all about we. We have uh, so much desire, so that's why we have so much clinging. We want this and that in order to remove, in order to resu uh, reduce that kind of attachment and desire. We make offerings and we make gen generosity and, and so on. So we have to understand that, that, that the technique is very important. I mean, the... the Uh, okay. So you want to get up a little bit, stretch your legs. Number 11, after we um, uh, bath, offering, and then you clean body with a, you know, nice smooth towel, yeah. Dry, dry the body completely with the respectfully, with the clean cloth, cloth towel, cloth towel. And then after that, we make um, clo cloth offering, clothing offering, you know. So if, uh, if it's, a, you know, Buddhas, usually uh, in the Buddhist practitioner, uh, there are two categories, a monastic type and a lay practitioner. Uh, if you're a fully ordained monks, I mean the... Uh, like Buddhas, uh, most of the Bodhisattvas in uh, they are in actually in a lay uh, practitioner's cloth, you know. Uh, Buddhas, you make a three robes, monks' robes offering, and then if uh, like Manjushri and Avalokiteshvara, they don't wear monks' robes, you know, they have a different uh, what do you call it, clothing. So you made uh, you make all this clothing in a special uh, material, precious material, clean, looks shiny, nice, beautiful smell, soft, you know, a thin, light, warm, <laughs> uh, yeah, all the good things. And after that, then there's a, another type of uh, uh, offering. This offering is something that we usually, you know, it's a uh, it means um, Things that we usually, you know, use. Okay, doesn't matter. So the the first chapter, the number number fourteen, is it's more like perfume, yeah. Uh, perfume, yeah. Basically, that has a good uh, smell, 
made of uh, all the, the natural uh, stuff, and no chemical, looks good, smells good, you know, feels good. Uh, fragrant, you know, the fragrant offering. Tuan Junin Chole Yung with Meto Mindara the Pemad Obalas. So the next one is uh, the flower offering. You make a flower offering, you know, those are the like offerings that we have in the shrine. Usually we have a perfume, we have incense, we have lamb, we have a uh, uh, flower. So the next one is a flower. We're making flower, beautiful, uh, countless flower that comes in different colors and different shape, different design, you know, all beautiful. <coughs> flower tingwa like rose you know flower rose nicely decorated <coughs> no damage we enjoy into the next one is uh 16 is incense again we make it offering imagine that the best incense with the best material you know the made with the best material and the best smell So the next one is the lamp, you know, it's not that we are making uh, some uh, electric uh, fake light that doesn't really have enough light. <coughs> the light here is a uh, lamp, you know, lamp. Uh, you know, the purpose of a lamp offering is to basically it's a significant to move, remove our negative darkness, ignorance, I mean our ignorance. The, the lamp, the purpose of the lamp offering is to, to remove our ignorance. So when we imagine lamp offering as not the lamp that only sees in the dark, but also the light lamp that sees daytime, nighttime, you know, and huge lamps. Yami program to yang yang di mati rinci rinci jam tu bawa payah nak kerja jor tu jiran jiran jam bawa jor. And again, you making a home offering, you know, the palace, beautiful mandala, cre wonderfully created and made of all these precious jewels, precious stones, wish fulfilling jewels. Then the next one is aspiration offering, aspiration. So we already list a whole bunch of offerings already and here it says whatever is not included there including music, beautiful music and whatever offering exists there and I'm going to make an offering. Basically the result of making these offerings to eliminate suffering of all sentient beings. And the next one is Tam Chu Kun Chu Tam Chie Tang Chu Tin and the Kuru to Senti Meto Lasoba. And all, now you're making offering of uh, tax, Dharma tax, and the Sutupas, and also the precious flowers that like a uh, falling, you know, like rains, <coughs> and continuously never stops. So the next one is Lanami Binchupa means a special and uh, unsurpassable uh, offering. So how do we know how to make an unsurpassable offering? And whatever we know it's already listed, already did it. So now we don't know how to make an unsurpassable offering. But therefore now we are going to do the same way as these past bodhisattvas have done. Like a Manjushri, uh, Avalokiteshvara, Vajrapane, and all those great bodhisattvas. Whatever they did, we wanted to do the same way. So the last one is an uh, offering of um, praise, praise offering to the Buddhas and bod Bodhisattvas. So make a very beautiful uh, uh, prayer, praise, 
and with beautiful melody and beautiful sound, you know. So that's the Tuyang praise with the, uh, the making offering of a praise with a melody. So the next one is Sansara, uh, prostration. So now you might want to make a prostration to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas again, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, and all the Bodhas and Bodhisattvas. You uh, imagine that your body I and mean, life is not only one single person but manifested countless, countless number. So all those countless number of yourself are doing prostration together to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas with the respect from the body, speech and the mind. So respect from the body is bowing down as so you're paying respect. And then the speech is your chanting the prayer, chantalo, you know, Sanjali. Uh, like we have a prayers. Um, uh, so those prayers, we recite these prayers, and then in mind we thinking that the Buddha is is the enlightened being, enlightenment, free from all suffering, achieve every qualities. So, and then Buddha taught the teachings, that is the path to achieve enlightenment. And there are bodhisattvas, uh, sanghas, who are already entered into that path, a journey to the Buddhahood, you know. So, and I am also going to go through that path with um, uh, uh, sanghas companion on the Dharma path, that is the Dharma, which is Buddha taught, you know. So I prostrate to Buddhas and Bodhisattvas mm -hmm. and Dharmas so that my journey will complete, my journey will successful as you, as you, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, have success. Chancelo, Lu, Tu, Pen, Chancelo. Chanchuk, Semji, Yenam, Tan, Chuti, Nam, Chancelo, and Kimbo. And also you do prostration to the bodhisattvas and also situpas are actually mm, representing the you know we have a uh, statues of the buddhas are the representing buddhas and uh, the prayer books are representing the dharmas and then situpa usually representing for uh, sangha so we also do prostration to those as well as uh, kempos uh, those who bestow the teachings, those, those who show the path of enlightenment to us. So that's 25th. So the 26th is actually uh, again a refuge. You know, refuge, we take Buddha Dharmas. We take refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha. So usually the refuge have a two different levels of a taking refuge. There's a, mm, a two common refuge and uncommon refuge. The common refuge means that is common to every Buddhist practitioners uh, take a common uh, refuge, but but uh, that common refuge is uh, not so special because. Uh, uh, we take refuge Buddha Dharma Sangha. Um, what is this? In order myself to free from suffering and and uh, achieve happiness. So that's our intention. It's very limited. So therefore, uh, it's a ordinary ordinary refuge. And then the special uh, the Mahayana refuge is different because Mahayana refuge is means from now till reach enlightenment I take refuge in Buddha Dharma Sangha so that's a Mahayana refuge 
So we take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. And then next one is actually, next chapter, starting from 27, is the actual confession, you know, the confess. Uh, the confession is one of the important uh, practice in Buddhism. Uh, we know that uh, there's one of the seven branches uh, offering. Uh, the confess, it's, it's a usually uh, antidote to uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, as an ordinary sentient being, we always have a hard time to accept our own faults and mistakes. Uh, although we do lots of mistakes in this samsara, this fall, but it's very difficult to accept it. And then confess means accepting your faults and mistakes and, and, and the limitation, you know. So, you know, you uh, the, I mean, uh, the other religions have that too. Like you, when you, uh, if you're a Christian, go to Sunday and then tell the whoever, the priest or God that you have done this in that, in that week. So then you're gone, you know. So <clears throat> we have a confession that um, okay. So the confession have also different steps. The first one is object of confession. Who you are going to confess in front of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, basically three jewel again. So then the next one is um, 28, chapter 28 is a Sunjimba Tok. So confess, you usually have a four. We say Tok, Tok, Jih. Tok is, I think, powers, yeah? Four powers. Uh, uh, the first one is Tinjitu, uh, means uh, object, uh, object, yeah. Uh, and then the second one is Suinjimbetok, uh, means uh, regret for what you have done. And then the next one is Yimbokundujibetok, means that you are committing or kind of a uh, Promising that not to 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 do these negative actions again. What is it? Restoration. Restoration. Uh, Okay, so anyways, the first one is Sunji um, Bato, which is uh, starting with the page uh, chapter, uh, no, what do you call it? Sentence 28, okay? Toma Medin Korwa Na Cherap Deam Yenda Do Dak Mansal Jipa Am Jita Chawa Nida Nes. So here what it says. From the beginningless time, and I have committed so much negative karma, intentionally, unintentionally. So you cannot uh, say no because the result is so obvious. We are in samsara with the full of suffering. That shows that we have done so much negative karma in the past. If we never done negative karma in the past, we wouldn't be in samsara with the full of suffering we would be in enlightenment you know we would be in buddhahood in bodhisattva hood so we have done it whether you like to say or not and we have to accept it we have done lots of negative karmas and many of them we have done intentionally and a lot of them unintentionally like this lifetime and also previous lifetimes. And I myself have done many negative karmas and also I encourage or indirectly indirectly, yeah, and also support for other people doing negative karmas too. Jita Tsarwa Nita, ne? Yes, some of them, when other people doing negative karma, negative actions, I rejoiced. 
Jesus will not give a number in Turkey now. So now, in front of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, I'm going to confess all the negative karma that I have done directly from myself or through other people or, or uh, you know, intentionally or unintentionally, whatever negative karma that I have done, I am going to completely confess in front of you. The reason why I have done this is because I did not have enough wisdom to know you know, know how to avoid the cause of negative karmas. So that's why it happens. Now I realize that I made a mistake and I'm going to confess. And also I may have done uh, lots of uh, and I may have accumulated negative karmas through harming or, or to my parents or guru or buddhas or bodhisattvas as a result I may have created life uh, I have done those out of my negative emotions reflective emotions the mainly ignorance so now I wanted to confess from the bottom of my heart, genuinely, not just the saying it, but also from my heart, I wanted to confess. 31. So because of I have uh, cultivated or I have involved in so much negative actions, and now I have so much, what do you call, pneumon, sin, yeah? Not really sin, um, uh, negative, ne delusions, obscurations, you know, uh, negative emotion. I have so much of them, I'm going to confess in front of you. I have uh, done uh, so much, you know, in the past, and I'm going to confess. means that do I'm going to confess in front of those who achieve enlightenment. So that means Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. If I don't confess, I may die before I purify or before I eliminate negative karmas. Then it'll be a big problem because then I have to, you know, go through <coughs> lots of pain. I may be born in hell realm and all those places. So therefore, I have to confess as soon as possible. And I have to get rid of this. I have to get out of this pain and suffering, I mean negative karma, as soon as possible. <coughs> so therefore, please help me and grant me blessing so that I can get out of those uh, negative karmas. Lord said, So the death is very uncertainty. Whether we like or not, I mean, nobody likes to die, but it'll come for sure. It's very certainty. The problem is when it's uncertainty. So therefore, you never know. If you don't confess right away, that the Lord of Death would not wait us to finish our uh, removing our negative karmas. So whether I remove my negative karmas, or not, they will come when the time comes. But we don't know when is the time. So that's the problem. So that's why you cannot really make a schedule, you know, a plan. So you have to act as soon as possible, it says. And then, doesn't also necessarily you have to get sick and then die. Nada, mana, There are so much 
uh, what do you call, uh, cause to death, you know. Not necessarily always you have to sick first, then, then die. You can be dead in any, any, any circumstance, you know, an accident and food poison and, 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 and killing and all kind of things. So when death comes, I only myself have to go. I cannot take anybody with me, no matter how many friends and family, loved ones I have. I cannot take anyone with me. Yet, I did not know that I was so caught up with my friends and families. Because of those, I had to create so much negative karma to protect my loved ones and family and friends and also to destroy my enemies and those who harms me. And so through all these actions, I have created so much negative karma. But when it comes to death, I cannot take anybody with me. I just have to go by myself. So when death comes, I mean, at the eventually, even if your family, friend, relatives, or your enemy, you know, your uh, um, competitor, compet competitor, your uh, oppose, whatever, nobody can live it, has to die. So therefore, of course, it is certainty that I have to die. Whatever things that happens in the past with your friend or people who you like, people who you don't like, and who hate, whatever, it's just past already. The only thing left is the memory. And you cannot take anything, either it's a good or bad, you cannot take anything with you, just like a dream. If you had a dream while you're sleeping, you're seeing and you're uh, feeling until you woke up. But as soon as you woke up, dream is dreams. You don't see anything, you just remember some things. Whatever past in the, happened in the past, you don't see them anymore. It's already past. So and also this this very moment, and we are seeing that lots of our Friends and relatives and family are also going one after another. And also our enemies or, you know, people who have nothing to do with us also going and one after another. But only thing left with you is the negative karma that you have created through them and with them. <laughs> So because I did not know that death is going to come, certainty, and when it's going to come, it's uncertainty. So that's why out of my anger and out of my uh, uh, attachment and out of my ignorance, these three poisons, and I have done so much negative karmas through my body, physical body, uh, also wor words and also uh, intention mentally I have done so much negative karma now it's 39 so my every day and every year every moment every hour our life is becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. And who can extend our life? Nobody. Nobody can come. And even if you pick the best uh, doctor in the world, still cannot do. You cannot 
pay millions of dollars to extend, no matter how powerful you are, no matter how rich you are, no matter how smart you are, we cannot extend our life. When time comes, we have to go. Because nobody can extend our lives, so then there's no doubt that we don't have to die. I mean, we have to die. The 40 dana marlando in the Nishikun Jintane Koros, okay, by Sorata, Dani Tiponi Wanjuros. When actual death comes, it's very painful and very suffering. I mean, uh, so who are going to experience this? Even if your friend, family, relative, loved ones are surrounded by you, but still the only you are the one who is going to experience the, the pain of death. You cannot share with anybody. So when you die, you're going to the next life, Bardo stage. And when you're going through the Bardo stage, there are all kind of terrifying experiences. The now, who is going to help you in that state? The only thing that helps is if you have a practice, if you accumulate the merit and the wisdom and practice and a compassion, bodhicitta, are the only thing will help you to make your journey peaceful, happier, smoother. Now, what you have to think is, I mean, you, what we have to say is, until now, we ha I did not know all these things. So now I realize that I have going to confess whatever negative karma that I have uh, accumulated in front of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas from bottom of my heart. I'm going to confess this. So here it says, if, if there's somebody who's going to uh, going to cut his legs and arms. So when you're going take, taking there to cut your legs and arms, so can you imagine how much fear and pain in his mind? <laughs> but when we die, When we die, we may have to be born in, in a hell realm and stay there for eons and eons if you have created so much negative karmas. So come so that person going to cut arms and legs just to one time. The worst thing is he will die, that's all. But if you have you know accumulate negative karma, so much negative karma. And then that will give you this, you know, unbearable pain and suffering for 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 eons and eons. It says. So when when the death comes. And no matter how loudly you yell or, or call for protection, nobody can come and protect you. So he jumped in tone and then a good day, you mong your nether, Jabu Mayan, that's a dark chatter sauce. So, what should you do when there's nobody come and help you, and when you are in a, such a situation that dying? And are going to be born in, in the hell realm or lower realms. So therefore I am going to confess right now. So the next stanza 47.
So the Tinji top is also you are requesting Buddhas and both 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 sattvas to protect you and to help you. So we're going to <coughs> you're going to take refuge in Buddhas and also teachings that came from Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Because these are the only can end your suffering of samsara, your pain, and uh, prevent you from reborn in born into lower realms. So therefore you're going to take refuge in Buddha, Dharma, Sangha and Bodhisattvas. Because I'm so afraid of death and, and pain suffering of lower realms, I'm going to offer my life to Manjushiri as well. And also Samantha Banda, Manjushiri and uh, Avalokiteshwara. And also Vajrapane, who has uh, complete the power to destroy the negative emotions. And I'm going to offer you my body, uh, so therefore, you, so that you can protect me from being born in Lawrence. Papa, now can you the sign of the Chapter So now you're going to request all the eight bodhisattvas. Nanke Nimbo, Sai Nimbo, Avalokiteshvara, Manjushri, Vajrapane. Kanjil pone hindi, pone lasu tamu tala suni. That is Vajrapani. You're requesting, uh, requesting Vajrapani to protect you. The last sentence it says, Until now, I never listened to you and I didn't follow your instructions and your teachings. Now I regret, so I'm going to listen to you and uh, follow whatever instructions there in the Dharma teaching. So please prevent me falling into lower realms and re remove, uh, eliminate my sufferings during your chapter so and the fears so the next one is uh, in book with the job top it's applying antidote the power of antidote there's four powers in confession right So now it says when we are sick in order to cure from the sickness you have to listen to doctor doctor's instruction and you have to follow whatever he give you instructions and taking right prescription and so on if you don't listen to him and if you if he asks you to when you have a headache if you, he asks you to take a medicine for a headache if you uh, take something else it doesn't help so here in our situation even if you have to follow doctor for small problems of a headache so here now we are sick with negative poisons you know we have a negative poisons in our mind we are completely sick and going to die so in that situation of course we have to follow the instruction of a doctor of of buddha and bodhisattvas we have to listen to them and we have to uh, practice according to their teachings if if there is a person who have one of the negative emotions would have a power to destroy the whole world destroy everything that that person have that also so in order to have that in order to cure from that illness the only one medicine that is a bodhicitta practice and bodhicitta 
only medicine is the practice on dharma, practice on bodhicitta. There is no other medicine to cure that that sickness of negative of afflictive emotions. Like if you're sick with anger, and hatred, jealousy, <coughs> desire, all those are negative emotions. Sometimes we call three poisons. Three poisons means uh, anger. Anger and hatred are same category, right? Anger and hatred and, and jealousy and all those are same category. And attachment, desire is in some uh, one category. And then ignorance. This we call three poisons. Dela member Tamchen Chin, Sumu Tamche, Jimbaya Katar Mazi, Sembane Shin, the Tamo member Ne. So for us in our situation, the, the real the the real doctor is enlightened beings or Buddha. Buddha has the medicine of the Dharma who will cure from completely cure from our sickness of afflictive emotions. Our suffering of samsara. So when we have that opportunity, if we still don't listen to the teachings, then it's very stupid. Because <laughs> I couldn't find the other words, so I have to use that word. <laughs> so there's still some examples, some. Um, uh, you know, examples, yeah. So if you walk, let's say walk in the park, you know, you have to be careful, you have to be aware of not falling into the river or over the bridge or broken, and you know, area. So even for the little thing, we have to have awareness, you know, we have to have careful with this. But the here, so this one, falling into the lower realms is actually we are falling from a cliff that has um, 15,000 miles high, you know. It says, of course, you have to be careful. And try to not make sure that you don't fall from there. And then once you fall, it doesn't, you can't just come out right away. It stays there for eons and years. So therefore, you have to be really careful not to fall into that club. It says, and sometimes we know that we're going to die, and we know that we, uh, we don't, we we don't know when we're going to die. But still, we always assume that today for sure I'm not gonna die. This year for sure I'm not gonna die. This month, this week, so you make all kind of plans, but you still even don't have a single, uh, you know. Uh, confident or ensure or assurance mm -hmm. that you're not going to die and even not next next moment you know so therefore you have to uh, act right away practice the dharma and practice the compassion so no, as again, nobody is going to give us assurance, or or uh, you know, uh, not not going to die. So therefore, we have to afraid of the death. Was that right? Who can give me the fearlessness? <laughs> So whatever happens in the past, like if you have experience, if you enjoyed your life so much in the past, you know, you have the best house to live, or you have the best music to listen, you have the best car to drive, you have the best friend and everything, but still they're all gone. It's already past. You already experienced, that's fine, but you cannot still craving and continue to have that. 
Because all, whatever happened in the past is already past. Past and gone. So therefore nothing left here for me so that I can use for my next life or my uh, my bardo. Still if you are hoping or what do you call a, um, craving for those there's nothing but negative karma of life experiences all season past the left what left me what now remains anyways so it's in the that they need the hiba nampang ne kipur ka hin drog na zada man da kun kiro why you are alive you have friends and family and, and people who you like, who you don't like. So in sin that I'm taking the need and he but now pang ne keep working. When the death comes, you just have to leave, go by yourself. You cannot take anybody. So therefore, there's not much really point to have friends and families and relatives. <laughs> So then we should not so much obsess with these things, I think. Because the more you build um, desire, attachment, it makes it harder to give up and harder to let it go. But doesn't mean you have to leave everybody and walk away. Until you achieve at least some level of bodhicitta, you, won't, you don't have to try that. So the thing is, now what you have to really think is negative karma, negative actions like this, negative uh, three negative actions with our physical body, four with our speech and three with our mind. All those negative karmas, I mean negative actions, the only thing that they produce is a suffering for ourselves. Even for this life and next life and then being born in the lower realms. So therefore now we should try to reduce our negative actions, try to eliminate as much as possible. Means all the time, 24 hours. Out of my ignorance, I have done those negative karmas. Uh, you know, when, when there's negative karma, when we talk about negative karma, we have two types of things. Kieba and Rangi. The Chieva Kanamato is something that Buddha said, okay, you're not allowed to do. Like for example, when you take a monk's vows, you have not allowed to do certain things and that. That become negative karma since the Buddha, you know, put the rule. But there are certain things, a Rangi Kanamato means killing somebody, no matter whether Buddha says no or he, uh, not allowed, even before that or it's always negative, you know. So it says, whatever type the negative karma that I have created in the past, whatever I have done in front of Ngombo means Lord, Protector, which means Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, holding my palms together, and I'm going to confess in front of you, and thinking that having a so much fear of suffering and I'm going to confess and prostrate to you and request you to protect me. So the last one, the 65 is... Um, is the conclusion it says whatever negative karma that I have done nothing good will come out of it so all 
bad because they are cause and conditions of the suffering of ourselves, of others. Uh, these are the cause that keeps us in samsara, you know, so therefore in the future I'm not going to do any of those crimes, any of those negative karmas. I think finish. <laughs> we have four minutes? Maybe you can ask some questions. Because this, what I'm saying is this, the second chapter is not that complicated, right? It's just explaining what do we have to think, what we should think. Especially all those offerings are not complicated. And I'm sure there's like a types of uh, perfumes and different types of uh, flowers and birds. You know way more than I do. So you can think whatever you know. Maybe we go to a zoo or something, you know, and to count and to put the list and take a pictures and then try to imagine. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question about um, the Buddha who was meaning of uh, Bodhi, as in Bodhicitta, as in uh, Bodhi tree, mm -hmm. and is it related to the word Buddha? Yes, Bodhi is, at, no, well, the Buddha is, the Bodhi and Buddha are, are both Sanskrit word, right? Uh, Bodhi means, it, if you literally translate, it means altruism, you know? Bodhi. Yeah. Altruism? Yeah. It's a, it's a kind, this kindness, you know, heart. Bodhi. Kind heart. Bodhicitta means the kind heart. And Bodhisattva means those who have that altruism. The person who have altruism is a Bodhicitta, right? Yeah, Bodhisattva, yes. But, uh, and, and when they translate Bodhi, Changchup, in Tibetan word, Changchup. Chang means free and chup means achieve so you free from what negative karmas all the negative karmas fractive emotions you know we have a negative uh, obscurations mistakes and any any negative aspect you free from any type of negative aspect I mean every negative aspect and then chup means achieve or accomplish every positive. You know, the Buddha or Changchup is, is also Buddha, same meaning as a Buddha. And the Sang Jie, same thing. Sang and Jie, or Chang and Chup, they're both the same. Which means fully freed from every negative aspect and fully accomplished every positive um, achievement, you know. You're free from negative anger, hatred, jealousy, mainly three poisons. Then you achieve fully developed, fully achieve your compassion, loving kindness, your wisdom. So that's the the, the Buddha's. Actually, the the meaning of the Buddha is uh, sang and jie means fully free, completely free, and completely achieved. I think we can do a little short page number 23. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a depends, depends on your karma. You know, if you, if you, if you have that same karma that you will be born, same human being, and then your dogs have to have the same karma, you know, <laughs> to born as a dog and then you be the owner. So the karma is, you know, the karma, the, the word meaning karma, it's a cause and effect. 
It's a state for a straightforward. It seems simple, but when he goes to the deeper in the previous life and future life, it's very profound. So I cannot predict your next life, and I cannot predict your uh, dog's next life, and I cannot.